good morning guys and welcome back to the channel today in the mastering firecraft playlist series we're going to talk a little bit more about fire and understanding some stuff that really isn't i haven't seen it covered on other channels now in this playlist you're going to find how to tips and tricks of various fire lays fire starting tips and tricks ferrule rods and etc different ways to start a fire different kinds of fire etc but i want you to understand something there's a visual clue that can help you a lot in your fire building and so we're going to go over that the colors of the flames and what that indicates to should indicate to you okay this is a simple overview because understanding fire is actually a fairly complicated topic the types of woods, the types of conditions that can affect the performance of fire. Is it extremely cold and extremely dense air and misty and the, the temperature of the ground and the wood and everything is very cold? Is it very hot and dry air? All those greatly affect fire. So by seeing a difference in the flames, it can give you a clue as to what you need to do to improve your fire. So let's look at my little diagram right quick and I want to discuss the different types of flame and fire. Okay. When you have created ignition and you have got the first of the flames, red is the very first thing. Red is by far the weakest. And what it means is that you have reached the ignition point of a given thing, the, the wood, the shavings, the whatever. You've reached the ignition point, but just barely, okay? Heat, the, the triangle of fire is heat, fuel, and air in a proper mixture. This can be a little bit of skew depending on conditions. And in this, you have fuel, you have air, but you don't have enough heat. It's just over the, the threshold. It lasts the shortest of all of them and usually indicates it's gonna go out like that. The heat has created a flame and it started to spread, but as it does, it's lost the amount of heat it needs and the material around it has dropped back below ignition point. So it's kinda like, <sighs> and it goes right out. So red flames are by far the most fragile and they don't last just that long, okay? So when you see red, think not enough heat, okay? The next step up, orange. A lot of times you'll get a campfire going and you'll have orange flames. What is orange telling you? Orange is telling you lack of heat. No heat. I have reached the combustion point and I am burning, but I'm just, I can go out any second. That orange flame, you normally see orange flame when your wood's a little bit wet because what's happening is as it's trying to burn and those gases are coming out of the wood, they're so damp with sap, water, etc. Or maybe the air is so damp, dense and damp, that it's robbing the heat away from the fire itself. As the flames come up and they're getting a shallower and shallower depth and they're running out of heat. That heat level has not been reached yet. So if you have, you see orange flames, it, we don't have enough heat. Maybe the wind is blowing the heat away, the breeze. So you want to think, there's lack of heat, we want to trap heat, wind breaks, and etc., to let that heat build up. Because we've got to have this triangle in the proper ratio, and we, there's still not enough heat there. See, so it, it technically is burning, but is is that source of heat gets just a few inches away from the actual fuel and all, it's dropping below that threshold again and turning back into red. 
So when you look at the flame, it'll be orange with red tips. And again, red is no heat. Orange is not enough heat. We're trying, we need to trap that, we need to block it off to get more of the heat trapped around it. Now you can do this by putting up a windbreak if you've got a breeze. You can also lay wood on the outside of the fire to help kind of trap some of that heat inside. Don't smother it, but put from the outside a little bit more wood on it or whatever to hold that heat like a hot rock, see, and generate that heat so that'll push the, em the heat envelope up. Yellow flame, it's a little bit brighter. Yellow flame will be start out as orange and then transfer not to red but to yellow. Now we're getting heat, okay? Now we're heating the wood and getting the gases. The gasification is beginning. The gases are coming out of the wood as it burns. That's the real secret. We want those gases coming out of the wood. The, the wood itself is heating up like you would boil a hot dog. And that internal heat is reaching the point that it's forcing those gases out. Think about when a pot of water boils, the steam comes off because that is gasifying. Well, that solid piece of wood, when you heat it to the proper heat, it will start gasifying as well, and that's what we want to burn because gas burns far more efficient. And that's whenever it turns into white, and that's what we want. So yellow is close to balance, and it's beginning to gas. White is fully gas. So now we've reached full gassing. And that gas that's coming up, it's getting the proper mixture. As it comes out of the heat, there's too much heat, but not enough at the actual main part of the fire right here. As it starts to rise up, you got a big old bed of burning wood and coals. You've got the heat column coming up. You got air sucking in from all the sides and being drawn up, a draft by that rising column of heat. Once it gets up here to a certain height, there's enough of a mixing of the heat and the oxygen together that you get white. That gas gets what it needs and transfers from yellow to white. White, light, white is light. It projects out. That's also the long wave heating because anybody that's ever tried to stay warm beside a fire in the dead of winter can tell you that unless you've got flames, you don't have a lot of heat because the coals, you can have a great big bed of coals like this. The air is being drawn to it from every angle. But what happens whenever we get too much heat? This balance gets off again. What happens is you got a, you, you've been burning for hours, you know, it's, we're trying to stay warm. It's cold, cold night, and we burn quite a bit of wood, and we've got a great big coal pile. I mean, something like two or three feet across of deep bed of coals, and you throw another log up there, and it goes to burning, and it only burns for a few minutes, maybe ten minutes, and then the flames go out. And it's, it's sitting there, it's burning, and the glowing, you know, bright red coals are looking at you, but you stop feeling the heat. White light, white is light. It is projecting heat out. That is the gasification that is causing the long wave heat element. So it projects heat out to a much larger area. The red hot coals do not project the heat. Coals are for cooking remember and so they do project a lot of heat but the further away you get the less they project the white flames is what you want to stay warm with and so you threw that log up there and it went to burning for say 10 minutes and then it quits oh it's laying there still you see coals all over it, and it's just dancing in coals but there's no flame what's happened you only see you usually see this in the winter whenever it's dense cold air, it's pressing down, see, on that heat column. And it's kind of smothering the fire. You got tons of heat, you got tons of fuel, but you don't have enough air. Because like this, now this updraft of heat is so strong that when you throw that new log in there, 
the air ain't getting to it. The updraft of heat from these coals are so strong, it's redirecting the air and it's kind of smothering. A visualization I want you to think of is like water pouring off of it, like a waterfall. And you took something and put it inside the water of the waterfall. See, well you're inside that heat column and there ain't enough air. Air is not getting into it. Now I know when I say air, someone's gonna correct me down in the comments. Yes, it's oxygen. However, oxygen is merely a component of there and it is, yes, it is the oxygen needed for the combustion, but it's also the air flow of all the elements in air flowing past the coals that help fan it, fuel it, transfer off heat, etc. So it needs all that air to do it. Just pure oxygen is great, but it's gotta have the air flow. Just like you can, like a heat, uh, a wind break, you can smother a fire by cutting off its air, putting so much around it, the fire's down in a hole, let's say, and it can't suck air in. So it makes a beautiful big old bed of coals, but it doesn't make flames, see? That's the reason in the past they talked about digging a fire pit for cooking because if the fire was physically down in a hole, once that heat column got going up real good, it didn't get enough oxygen, and it would produce coals rather than producing flame, and we wanted coals for cooking, see? And finally we come to blue flame. Blue flame is combustion where it's right at that ragged edge, but it's still not quite got enough air. It's got the heat to combust, and so it makes a blue flame. You normally see them along the base of the logs or things like that. And yes, I realize that you can see blue or green. That's the minerals that may have been in the bark or of that tree of the location. You can get colored flame like that. But for the most part, what we're discussing is blue flame means lack of air. Remember the old saying, if you hold his nose, he'll turn blue. If you hold your breath long enough, you'll turn blue. Same idea. If you see blue flames along the bases, again, where you've got a great big bed and you're putting logs up there and you're not seeing much white flame, but you're seeing dancing little blue flames around the bottom, lack of air. Well, what can we do for that, Blackie? If you've got a big coal bed and you can see that you're starting to see some blue flames around the bottom and the, the white flames are not showing up as much. We're getting less and less. I can condense it. I can take and push the fire together. Push the coals together, make an even taller pile. And then on the outside edge of it, build like a log cabin. Put wood, 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 and begin a log cabin on the outside. Because now what's gonna happen is, and here's a, let me show you a proper way to do this. Okay, you got your big old bed of coals right here. You're gonna come up here and what you're gonna do is, you're gonna push it up together and you're gonna put a new piece of firewood just like that to the side, this is edge on. And you're gonna lay the next one. The next one you're gonna lay just like this, against that. The next one going that way is going this, that way. So you see this gap right here? Here's the bottom of the lawn here. Air can come underneath here then and go up. And it's made like a fence going around. So instead of laying the logs flat, you angle one up onto the other one like that. So it's an uphill. And under here, air will come in. Now that big column of coals, that heat's sucking up. Instead of the air just coming straight to the edge, now it's coming under that log and curling up. And these logs go to burning really well and generate a lot of flame because that draft coming underneath them, see? That's no Boy Scout trick. And it shed more light. And so you can see the heat, you can feel the heat better on a cold winter night. So to recap, coals are for cooking. White flames, light is for heat. Throwing light out into the distance so that we can see our camp and so we can feel heat. Sorry for the aircraft further away. Red flames, super weak, it's going out. Orange flames, not quite enough heat. We need to compress that heat down a little bit more and get, 
get it to more concentrate. Yellow flames, we're getting gas, we're slow burning. And if we're trying to conserve our fuel a little bit and we don't need heat that much like in the summertime, yellow flame is fine. It's, it's cooking, we're getting some heat, we're getting some whatever, but it's not projecting heat quite as far. White flames, we're getting full gas and therefore we're transferring the heat further out. Blue flames, we're starving the fire for oxygen. We need to change our setup to get more air into the mix. So that's the secret to it. The color of the flames are gonna give you an indicator of how the combustion is going and gives you a working idea of what you need to do to improve it. Maybe I need to put a windbreak over here to get the heat on up so I can make that transition to higher flames like I want. Maybe I want to project heat out in the winter to warm me up so I want to stack stuff up vertically rather than horizontally so that the as I stack it on top of the fire that heat column spreads the fire the full length of it instead of horizontal where it can only do so far and then the flames lift off it puts it higher into that heat column so I get flames further up and I project heat further out a TP fire is used for light and it's used for warming in the winter a um, cabin fire is used for generating coals because it burns down to coals really easy. Different fire lays make a difference. Hope you've enjoyed this guys. If you have, have please hit that like, share, and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. Till next time guys, I'm Blackie wishing you safe journeys. Have a great day guys.